Hello humans, my name is Kenyo and Overload and oh my god, we have something absolutely insane for you today. Something that will make the image to image tab inside Stable Diffusion even more powerful. And that is Control Net. A brand new neural network that can use multiple models to capture info from a base image to create maps to transform this data to a brand new image. It basically gives you even more power using the image to image tab. Now installing this extension is very easy, but first for some users you might need to install the CV2 library. And for this you're gonna come here, click on the folder URL, type cmd, press enter, and in the command prompt window you're gonna type pip install open CV Python and then press enter. And this will install the CV2 library that you need to run this extension. And then you can launch Stable Diffusion. And then of course, inside Stable Diffusion, you're gonna click here on extensions, click on install from URL, you're gonna copy and paste the URL that you'll find in the description down below, and then click install. Then click on installed, check for updates, to make sure that all of your extensions are up to date, and then click apply and restart UI. And now we need to download the control net models. So again, you're gonna click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page, and you're gonna select each one of these models, and then for each model, you're gonna come here and click on download. Now there is a lot of models and they take a lot of space, so make sure that you have at least 45 to 50 gigabytes of space on your computer. Yeah, I know, that's a lot. So then once you've downloaded all the models, and for me it took a while, you're gonna select them, control X to cut them, go inside the extensions folder, Web UI control net, models, and then you're gonna paste them right here. And now that everything is done, if you come here in the image to image section and you scroll down, you will see here a brand new option called control net. And if you click on it, you will see now a bunch of options. Now don't worry because it is not as complicated as it seems. Now before we start using the extension, you're gonna come here and choose a stable diffusion model. For this video and for this example, I'm gonna be using the anything v3. Then you're gonna upload an image that you want to change, in my case so we'll be using this one and then you're gonna write a prompt. In my case I would like to transform this beautiful viking woman into an anime viking man standing in a garden full of flowers. And as you can see since we are using the anything v3 we need to use the damperu tags. So then you're gonna scroll down, make sure that you have the right width and height of the image. So in my case it's 768 by 1024. For my example I'm gonna increase the denoising strength to 0.9 I'm gonna choose the same seed, so we can easily see the differences between all the models. And now let's go over all the options available in the control net panel. So first you have the enable or disable button, which makes it super easy if you want to enable or disable the control net option. The scribble mode, which will basically reverse the colors. Now you will probably not use it, but I will show you later a practical use of that option. Here we have the low VRAM option, so if you have a graphics card that has less than n gigabytes of VRAM, you should definitely check this option. Otherwise this will not work, because unfortunately the control net option really requires a lot of VRAM to work. So then you have the preprocessor and the model option. Now these two options are linked together, so if you come here and you choose for example the Kani preprocessor, you need to come here and choose the Kani model. Otherwise obviously this is not gonna work correctly. Now as of right now you have 8 models that are available, but unfortunately since this is a brand new extension, as of right now only 6 models work. So for me like the normal map does not work and the segmentation map does not work, but maybe by the time that you watch this video, these two models will be working again. So then here you have the weight, which is basically how powerful the model is gonna act on your image. Again later I will show you examples of images made with different weights. So here you have the resize mode, and I highly suggest that you choose the just resize mode, and here for the width and the height you're gonna choose the same that you have right here, so in my case it's 768 by 1024, and here you're gonna input the image that you want to process using the control net option. Now here and here you can actually choose different images, but for the sake of simplicity I'm gonna choose the same one. And now for example if I choose the Kani preprocessor with the Kani model and I click on generate, it gives me something like this. And as you can see the Kani model basically created an outline of the entire image, almost as if this was an outline made with a pencil, and then using the data of this map, using the data of these outlines, it has created a brand new image. And as you can see with this option, it has preserved a lot of the characteristics of our base image. We have basically the same shape, the same outlines, the same pose, but it did transform our beautiful woman into a more manly character. 
And this was just done with one single model. All the other models work in a completely different way, with completely different results. And since I don't want my videos to be too long and too boring, I actually made a mirror board so that you can see all the different models and how they work on your base image. And for each model, I generated an image with different weights and with the scribble mode on. So for each model, you can see if you need to choose the reverse mode or not, and how exactly the weight changes the final image. So let's start from the very beginning. This is our base image, and this is the image generated with the Anything V3 model. With the control net turned off, it gives me something like this. Pretty good image, but since our denoising strength is so high, it doesn't really capture any of the details from our base image. So then the Canny model, as I showed you previously right here, preprocessor canny and model canny gives you something like this. And as you can see here with the weight at 1, it did capture a lot of the details from the base image while still creating a brand new character. If you decrease that weight to 0, we have less details from our base image, but we have way more stylization. And on the opposite side, with the weight at 2, we captured way more details from our previous image, but with also less stylization compared to the images made with less weight. And here on this model, when the reverse mode is activated, we can see here that we lose a lot of the details from our base image. So again, do not use the scribble mode with the canny model. You will not get good results. So then you have the HED model. So if you choose preprocessor HED and here the HED model, and if you click on generate, it gives you something like this, which is very, very similar to our image that you see right here. And that is because very similarly, just like the Canny model, it has created these types of outlines from our base image and then used this information to generate a brand new one. But since this model captured a lot of the details, a lot of information from our base image, it is not surprising that our final image is extremely similar. So the HED model is very good if you want to make small changes on the image. Here's a practical use case of the HED model, where here it is used to create an old painting of an old man. As you can see, this is the base image, and using the HED model, it has created a very similar looking image, but this time in a completely different style. But we still managed to capture a lot of the details from our base image. Now the HED model is actually pretty interesting once you start decreasing the weight a little bit, because not only we can keep a very similar looking pose, but in a way we can also keep a lot of the details from our character, such as the long hair, the belt, and even the weapon on the left side. However, if you increase the weight for some reason, all the colors wash out from the image, so this is definitely something to keep in mind if you use the HED model. So then you have the Midas, or the depth model, which is extremely powerful. So to use it, just select Midas and depth right here. And if you click on generate, it gives me something like this. A very interesting looking image that captures a lot of the details from the previous image with the same pose, the same hair, very similar looking accessories. And if we look at how this was done, as you can see, it has created a depth map from our base image, which is why you can see so much similarities from our base image. The outline is basically the same, the character's position, even the outline of the building that you see right here, everything basically stays the same. And again, just like the HED model, having the weight at zero still allows you to create a character that is very similar looking, in a very similar looking pose, but with a completely different stylization. And again, the more you increase the weight, the more your final image is gonna look weird. So definitely do not go overboard with the weight using the Midas model. So then you have the MLSD, which is very particular because it's not exactly for characters and you'll see why soon enough. So again, if you select MLSD for both the pro processor and the model, and if I click on generate, this is our final image. A little bit weird looking, and that is because if you look at the map that was created, you can see a lot of straight lines. Why is that? Well, that is because the MLSD model is definitely better used for buildings or images that have a lot of straight lines, such as a room, a building, or stuff like that, because it can only create straight lines, and using those straight lines, it can then create a very similar looking image, as you can see right here with this example of a room. So again, unless your image is a building or has a lot of straight lines, you should not use the MLSD model for images of a character. But it is still a very powerful model nonetheless. So then you have probably one of my favorite model, which is the open pose model. So if you select the open pose for preprocessor and the model, and if I click on generate, it gives you something like this. A lot of stylization, and yet he is in the 
exact same pose as our base image. And that is because the open pose model automatically recognizes the pose of a character to create these kinds of weird shapes to represent the limbs and the position of the limbs of a character. As you can see, this is the arms, this is the head, this is the neck. And using all these data, you can basically transform a pose from a base image to another character. Here is again a practical example. This is our base image. Using the open pose model, it has created these kind of weird shapes of where the character's limbs are. And then it has transformed this pose into another character. As you can see, our chef right here is basically in the exact same pose as our base image, which is really, really super powerful. Because using this model, you can take any image of any character in any pose, and then thanks to the pre-process of this model, transfer it into another character, which is really super, super cool. Now, obviously, it is better if you can see at least part of your character's body, because if you only see the top of your character, if you only see the face, this model will not really be super useful. And then finally, for the last working model in this extension, it is the Scribble model. So for the preprocessor, you're gonna choose the fake Scribble, and for the model, you're gonna choose the Scribble model. And if I click on Generate, it gives me something like this. Very, very interesting. And if you look at the maps that it has created, it is actually very similar to a mix between the Canny model and the HED model, where it has created very rough outlines of the character and of the entire image, and then used that data to create a brand new character. Now, although this model is very interesting, and can produce very interesting results, this model is not exactly made to convert a beautiful image generated with another model into a new one. No, 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 no. This model is actually really good if you draw an image yourself. Hence the name Scribble. So for example, if I upload here a scribble of a tortoise, then put my prompt right here, then drop right here the same image and enable this option right here, the scribble mode, very important. This is where you're gonna get the best results. And if I click on generate, it gives me something like this. Absolutely beautiful. This is a really super powerful model to convert any scribble or any sketch into an actually super beautiful image. Also, just a quick info, do not forget that this extension is just a script, meaning that you can use this with any model that you want. For this video, for this example, I just used the Anything V3, but you can use it with any model of stable diffusion. For example, if I choose the Protogen V2.2, the model that was used to generate this image right here, and using the Open Pose model, if I click on Generate, it gives me something like this, which is really, really cool. We have the exact same pose, thanks to the pose created with the Open Pose model, but on a completely different character. And also do not forget that you can still play around with the denoising strength. So if you want to keep more details from your previous image, just decrease it a little bit and then generate again. And just like this, it gives you absolutely unlimited results using the image to image option. And there we have it folks, the image to image tab is now even more powerful than before. So definitely try this out. These are some really powerful models. So download this extension and go make some really cool creations right now. And there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.